Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. The Ryzen 7800X3D is sold out everywhere. Sold out everywhere. Is that the end of the 7800X3D? Is it gonna be above $400 for the rest of its life? Or is it gonna get better? We'll also talk about Intel's Arrow Lake CPU launch. It's coming down the pike. Is it gonna save us from Zen 5's failure? We'll also talk about the upcoming 9800X3D, the RTX 5090. When can we expect these next generation high performance CPUs and GPUs? Remember, if you get value out of this video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. With that, let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 or 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And Windows 10 can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. What's the deal with the Ryzen 7800X3D? That's what here to be here wants to know. They've noticed it's becoming sold out in a lot of places. Will it be making a return? GMAC asking, will the 7800X3D come back below $400 US? They don't wanna wait till Black Friday. Yeah, so what is going on with the 7800X3D? It is sold out pretty much everywhere in the US. Now what's happening is that it appears it's not completely like discontinued or something. They just cannot supply enough into the retail channel right now, especially around, I'd say Wednesday through the, the weekend, basically. That's a long slug of every week. The CPUs are just not being able to meet their demand. So uh, for instance, at Newegg, like on Monday and Tuesday, you typically can back order it for about $400 US. However, I have noticed that right now, even though it's out of stock and it's on auto -note, notify it's $449, $449 is the price they're listing. Now, when it comes back in stock, maybe you'll be able to back order it for $399 again. I just don't know. And completely sold out everywhere else. I, it had been at Walmart for a little while. It looks like it's completely sold out there at $399. Everywhere else offering like $420-ish. And if you remember, if you remember and you watch our channel, I was begging you to buy the 7800X3D when you could before Ryzen 9000 launched because I was not convinced that Ryzen 9000 was going to come anywhere near the 7800X3D in terms of gaming performance. My other argument was even if it does, even the 9700X slightly edges it out, you will always be able to slot in a new X3D CPU, either 9800X3D or 1100X3D, or whatever they call Zen X3D CPU in the future. So you were really kind of doing yourself a solid by picking it up at that super discounted price. But I get it. A lot of people wanted to wait. They wanted to see where Zen 5 came in. And I don't think anybody, even me, Nobody was expecting Zen 5 to completely fall flat on its face in terms of its gaming performance. Yes, I know some of you in the comments are already typing, but Jason, for server workloads, that's great. Most of you want to build a gaming PC out there. You're not necessarily looking to build a big server that's all about power efficiency or whatever. Although, of course, the power efficiency stuff has also been dispelled versus the Ryzen 7000 series parts uh, largely. So really, you got almost no gaming uplift. You got almost no power efficiency uplift. And you're going to pay about $100 more for both the 9700X over the 7700X and the 9600X over the 7600X. By the way, we just put out our Ryzen 7600X build guide updated for 2024. What we would use to build it, we built an amazing Ryzen 7600X gaming PC. It was awesome. And you can do it for between 900 and about $1,500, depending on your GPU choice, largely your GPU choice out there. Check it out on the channel. I'll leave it linked down in the video description. It's amazing gaming CPU right now for $180 for the non-X version, or if you want to spend 10 bucks more, go ahead and get the 7600X for $190. But for those of you looking for the max gaming performance out there with the Ryzen 7800X 3D, what is going on? Obviously, there's a huge surge in demand. Everybody who was waiting to see what was going on with Ryzen 9000 realized, hey, not only is there zero uplift in Ryzen 9000, 7800 x 3 beats it by quite a big margin, and it's not entirely clear that the 9800X3D is going to be more than a couple percent better. Though we have heard in rumors, and you know, and not just rumors, AMD actually came out earlier this year 
And he said, in terms of rising 9,000 X3D CPUs, they were working on doing just more than slapping on X3D to Ryzen 9,000. They're working on some improvements to the IHS so they can dissipate heat better. They're working on making it overclockable and other things like that. So I'm expecting the 9800 X3D will be a good performer. We'll talk more about when we can expect it. I mean, listen, maybe quarter one, 2025, although I'm hearing there may be some delays with the 9800 X3D, either because it's, a, it's mostly a marketing strategy by AMD to get you to buy the Ryzen 9000 series CPU so they don't just rot on shelves, or or there may be some something legitimately not working as they wanted, either just with the entire Ryzen 9000 lineup, so they wanna kind of hold that back until they feel like they can really fine tune that in, or maybe there is something a little you know, wonky with the 9800 X3D. Those are all just rumors right now. I don't wanna I don't want to make you think that there's something wrong with it. I'm just saying buying the 7800 X3D seems like a super smart play right now. And that's why so many people are doing it. Is it gonna come back and sell? I, I just don't know. I mean, obviously AMD at this point has removed all of the retail discounts off of it. If they're not gonna sell any Ryzen 9000 series CPUs, and by the way, their sales figures for Ryzen 9000 are dismal. Look at the numbers that Tech Epiphany puts out on Twitter for Mine Factory. They're a major uh, PC parts retailer in Germany. If you look at AM5 sales, so that's Ryzen 9000, Ryzen 7000, it's all Ryzen 7000. There is barely any Ryzen 9000 series CPUs being sold. And if they are being sold, it's the 9950X. And the 9950X is actually the one you could make an argument for. Yeah, it's about $100 more than the 7950X, but if you're going to do a $3,000-ish PC build, what's another $100 to ensure that you get the fastest one? And for a lot of people putting together a Ryzen 9950X build, maybe they do want to take advantage of some of those AVX 512 workloads that it's so good at over any other CPU out there right now. So that makes sense that that one's selling 9900X, no. 9700X, no. 9600X, why would you even think about it? Will it come back? We'll have to wait and see, I'll be honest, but I, I'm telling you right now, if you want a 7800X 3D, your best chance is probably to look for it on like a Monday or Tuesday. Snag it as soon as you can see it. I will leave links down in the video description to all the major US retailers that we have. You can check them all right now, see if they're there, snag it when you can. Jack Kunisaki asks, should people wait for the 9800X 3D and the RTX 5090? Oof, ah, oh, man, that's a tough one. I gotta tell you, the 9800X 3D, again, we're not quite sure when that CPU is gonna be here. Uh, the earliest that I've heard that we're gonna get it is quarter one, 2025. We'll certainly get an announcement at CES, I believe, in January, 2025, because that's when CES, the Consumer Electronics Show is in Las Vegas. When is it gonna be available at retail? Now, oftentimes stuff that they announce there doesn't come out for either, you know, about a month or so. It's not usually the case that things are available immediately. So I would think retail availability, probably February or March earliest. And then obviously the RTX 5090, who knows when we're gonna get that. Uh, we've heard that there were some issues with Blackwell, uh, the architecture, but more on the AI side, not necessarily on the gaming side. Though the 5090 is a high enough end uh, product that there's a possibility that there were some issues there. There was basically delaying, and Nvidia actually admitted there were delays on Blackwell, but on the AI side. The other thing that's gonna delay you from getting an RTX 5090 is whether or not you can actually buy one, right? Remember when the RTX 4090 came out, you could not get one of those things unless you like camped out at a micro center and went day one. You like immediately got one on day one as soon as they went live because scalpers bought them all up. People were paying crazy prices and this was for months. I'll have to go back and look at our GPU market update videos and find out where, where was the first month you were actually able to get one. I think it was because it launched in the fall of 20. 2022, I think it was actually in the early part of 2023 was the first time we could actually grab one at retail without having to go basically through a scalper on eBay. So if that kind of sticks to the same formula for the 5090, especially given how kind of, I think the people really pent up in terms of like getting a new GPU that feels like a big uplift. The 4090 certainly felt like a huge uplift over previous generations. 5090 we're hearing is another kind of solid 40 to 50, who knows about these numbers by the way but 40 to 50% would, I think, feel like another huge uplift over the RTX 4090 out there. If that's the case, your scalpers are gonna grab that thing. There's gonna be a lot of excitement around it. You're gonna have to fight them out for it. So you'll probably end up getting one, I don't know, in the early summertime next year, uh, if that plays out. If it doesn't play out, if there's not the demand that I think there will be for it, then maybe, maybe you get one, you know, somewhere around March or something like that. 
who knows? So if you want to wait that long, that's a long time to wait. We're sitting here like at the beginning or middle of September right now. I don't know as I want to go that long without building my gaming PC. I probably just take advantage of whatever's available right now. And especially with like the AM5 platform, you can always drop in a new CPU upgrade in the future. And I mean, something like an RTX 4090, we went through this in our best GPU market update. I'll leave it linked down in the video description that we released about a week or so ago. Given all the uncertainty around the 5090 and everything, I honestly, especially the pricing, how much are they gonna charge you for that 5090? I really think Nvidia is gonna basically charge you as much as they think they can get maybe up to $2,500, maybe even more this generation. And then of course you can have the scalper fees on top of it. $1,700 RTX 4090 doesn't look so bad right now. So honestly, I think if you wanna build a gaming PC, now is your time. But where's Intel in the chat in terms of the high performance gaming CPUs? That's what Stefan wants to know. Do I think Arrow Lake is gonna bring a significant uplift in gaming compared to Zen 5 and also Zen 5 X3D? So the 7800 X3 or a 9800 X3 in this case. And Lemitz wants to know, how much do I think Intel's Arrow Lake launch is gonna be affected by all the instability issues their newest gen CPUs have been facing, that's LGA 1700, 13th and 14th gen CPUs. Will AMD be a safer and better choice for some time? Let's start off with Arrow Lake. Where do we expect them to come in? I thought the Lunar Lake stuff, this is all still first party. Lunar Lake is the architecture upon which basically Arrow Lake is gonna be based. The Lunar Lake is the mobile architecture that came out first, and it includes their battle mage, their next generation GPU cores in their integrated GPU, their iGPU. So it looks pretty impressive in terms of the first party numbers that we're seeing. I haven't really seen a lot of testing done that feels very fair. Intel showed some comparisons that, you know, maybe not very fair comparisons out there where they did better in battery life and stuff, but I'm a desktop PC person at heart. I know most of you are out there too. So we wanna know how's it gonna perform on the desktop? Because just because you have a good mobile architecture doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna scale when you start jacking up power and cooling into it. You might hit a ceiling that's happened for Meteor Lake, for instance. We never got Meteor Lake on desktop. Why was that? Looks like Meteor Lake just didn't scale very well with power. In fact, people like kind of almost forgot about Meteor Lake desktop. That's why we got 14th gen, at least that's my understanding. We got 14th gen. I use air quotes because it wasn't really a gen. It was just 13th gen where they took the highest bin CPUs and called them, oh, it's 14th gen so they could have a new number because basically Meteor Lake just didn't cut the mustard. Arrow Lake is coming and regardless of whether or not it cuts the mustard, they have to put it out because of those instability issues that you were talking about. Yes, we got a microcode update for them in a BIOS, uh, you know, in a BIOS rollout. Who knows whether or not those CPUs are actually fixed? Like what is the conditions under which that we would say, oh yes, those CPUs are fixed, check box. Like to me, I wanna see at least a year's worth of data where the failure rate for the i9, 14900K, 13900K, 13700, all the, especially the unlocked CPUs, comes down, come down to a reasonable, and the Intel can point to, hey, look, they were failing at this rate, now they're only failing at this rate. The failure rate's gone way down because of our mind. By the time we get that, it, it's gonna be old news. So to me, those those are kind of dead, uh, dead generations or dead CPUs right now. Maybe we'll come back to them in like future years as like a budget alternative out there, you know, especially if once Ryzen 5000 gets a little too slow, basically to recommend for faster and faster GPUs. But other than that, I, I just don't see us ever going back to 13th or 14th gen Intel, I think they're effectively dead. And I hope companies just learn a lesson out there from that. So where do we expect in terms of performance for Arrow Lake? From the data that I've seen on the internets, on rumors and some other places, it looks like Arrow Lake is gonna generally be competitive with Zen 5 in terms of its gaming performance. However, it looks like it's not gonna be the 7800X 3D. Now that might change. So largely the leaks that I've seen are basically, they look like engineering samples. So who knows where they're at in that validation process. Maybe that's not as far as they could have pushed that CPU, they're just validating something else on that CPU. And those results leak out who knows? It could be that there's a lot more headroom in those CPUs to go, especially maybe with overclocking them with faster RAM. I'm hearing that some of the motherboards might go almost all the way up to basically 10,000 speed memory. It's like, it's, it's gonna be above 9,000, right? So in terms of over, overall gaming performance, what I believe is that Arrow Lake will be competitive with non X3D Zen, C, Zen 5 and Zen 4 CPUs, since they're basically the same performance level. 
but that the 7800X3D will have at least a slight edge with super high-end GPUs, like an RTX 4090, eventually a 5090, right? But in the mid-range, it's gonna come down to what Intel can do in terms of price to performance. Right now, the big advantage that Ryzen has had is the chiplet design that, you know, anytime they have something that's not really selling like the 9700X, well, whatever we've produced may be gone, but as we produce new stuff, we're gonna just produce 9600Xs or just 9950Xs because maybe that's all that's really selling out there. Basically assemble, we're gonna put them into our Epic server lineup and we're gonna sell them to, uh, to data center instead. Intel doesn't really have that flexibility and that's why they've been just really taking the mouth from AMD, just bang, bang, bang over and over again because they just can't cut CPU prices or get the CPU pricing flexibility the way that AMD has been able to do with the Ryzen CPUs. I'm hoping that Arrow Lake with some of the packaging changes that they've talked about might change that, uh, might change that and be cost competitive again with Ryzen CPUs because Intel for so long, they were just used to be, we're the top partner. You're gonna buy us because we're the best. We don't have to compete on price and they didn't. They didn't at the high end for gaming, they certainly didn't. But now that they no longer have the gaming crown, what's their argument? They have to make a value argument to the consumer. And I think Intel has really failed in terms of making that value argument. They're like, Ooh, we got tons of cores. Okay, great, you got tons of cores, but that doesn't really translate to what drives a lot of uh, PC builds out there, which is gaming at some level. A 7800X3D still has eight super powerful cores. If you just look back in the last five or six years of CPUs, 7800X3D would just crush a lot of stuff out there for a regular consumer, like even somebody like me, I could be just fine on a 7800X3D doing our whole video editing process. Do we need a 7950X RTX 4090? That's our current build. Do I need a 9950X and a 4090 to edit YouTube videos? No, probably not. And I'm a higher end user than most people out there that just wanna do day-to-day -day desktop stuff, a little video editing, a little streaming here, kind of play their games. So Intel really needs to make a value argument to those folks out there in terms of its gaming performance. And that's what I'm really hopeful at. The the other thing I could think that Intel could do right now is they could also just take a real hard look at their motherboard prices out there. I know they're typically used to selling high-end Z series motherboards. And yes, we're gonna get Z was Z890 relatively soon for lots of money. However, I think they have to compete with AMD's B series motherboards because their Z series motherboards are basically kind of just slightly better versions of the B series motherboards that we recommend for everything out there. So Intel really needs to get a lot more competitive. I love PCs, I'm drifting. I <laughs> love the name, by the way. Ask, when are we gonna see Intel launch X3D CPUs? Can you explain the new Intel CPU naming scheme? No, I cannot, and I don't think anybody else can. And not to say that Intel's is any worse than the ridiculous AMD one that came out for their new CPU launches outside of the desktop stuff. I mean, they actually gave, AMD gave the press a decoder ring, a decoder ring to understand their naming. I just got to tell all you marketing folks out there, if you have to distribute a decoder ring to folks in order for them to understand your naming, Maybe your naming is a little too complicated. Do you think that? You think that? And that's mostly on the mobile side. And I don't want to get into that kind of beehive, wasp nest craziness of AMD's naming. But Intel's naming, I get that they felt like the numbers were getting too high. 15th gen would be just too high. Would it though? I don't think so. What is the Intel Core Ultra XTX ZZXXX5? You know, I mean, these names are crazy and I don't like them. Number one, you spent so long building up the name i7, i3, i5, i9. You spent all this time building up a really solid brand around that. People understand what that means. They generally understand the i5s are here. The i3s are kind of weak. The i sevens are like the stronger ones out there. And then the i9 is like the extreme. And all of a sudden now you're gonna come core ultra nine, core ultra this. It's just stupid. It is stupid, I'm sorry. I just hate the naming out there. And I think more than anything, I just hate the fact that I'm gonna have to say it over and over and over again in videos. I'm just gonna have to say these names over and over again. I mean, look, it's not monitor names. I, it's We're not yet at the, at the craziness of those strings of letters and numbers that are monitor names. We're not there yet. My little rant here on that. In terms of Intel X3D, uh, Pat Gelsinger last year at Intel's innovation event, which they're not holding anymore, 
you're not holding anymore, hold your PR event for crying out loud. How much money could you possibly be saving not to do Intel innovation event? I, I think that's just a no brainer, but clearly Intel feels differently. But in their Intel innovation event from last year, I guess the last one that they're ever gonna do, who knows? He was basically saying that they are working on X3D CPUs. They're gonna do kind of their own flavor of it. But there is going to be an increase in 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 vcash, basically. However, they're they're a couple of years behind. these These processes that we see where CPUs are coming out now, they've been in development for a while. So just understand that years, years are going to go by before we see x three d. Now, will we see it with this generation of CPUs, the Arrow Lake ones? Will there be an x three d version of Arrow Lake? I don't know, possibly, maybe, or it might be in the, what would be 16th gen, because this is supposed to be 15th gen, right? With the Inter Core Ultra 200 series. I think that's the name of it. With the next gen, maybe we'll get an X3D CPU. I certainly think Intel needs to do that. The one problem with the X3D stuff is that really the only that I can see, and let me know down in the comments if I'm missing something out there, the only workloads that really benefit from it are gaming. And right now, everybody's AI, 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 AI. So if it doesn't benefit AI, I just don't feel like they're gonna put a ton of money and development effort and fast track that right now. They're like a bunch of lemmings chasing AI stuff right off a cliff because who are they gonna sell this stuff to? What consumer wants to buy a laptop based on AI features, especially since they all seem to be about the same. So that's my rant about AI, by the way. I think a lot of these companies are chasing this stuff right off a cliff. I, I suspect that's what maybe happened to Zen 5. I might be wrong, but I, I suspect. Of course, for those of you who follow the channel, you know we just got hit by a hurricane here in New Orleans. Yes, Hurricane Francine came in, kind of punched us right in the mouth, basically. It landed as a category two. We were quite lucky in New Orleans. We got a lot of questions in terms of how exciting the hurricane was. And I just want to say, it sucked. It really sucked. There's really nothing exciting about it. You basically, I kind of wanted to almost do a whole video around our prep around it and everything. Let me know down in the comments if you want, if you'd love kind of like a vlog, right? And of course there's the kitties too. And the kitties did not like the hurricane at all. I'll wheel Mr. Mr. Barry in. The kitties did not like the hurricane at all. And they certainly did not like when the power went out and they did not like the no air conditioning. They're already well insulated as it is with all this fur. And they just became like melted puddles basically on the ground. We're trying to keep them cool as best we can, obviously. It wasn't ridiculously hot the day after because we still had a lot of the cooling effect from the water, but it was hot. And then power came back on uh, that night and it was like, whoo. And then we all just adrenaline crashed basically for like three or four days. You felt like you couldn't get, get out of bed because you just been running in fight or flight mode for, for days at that point. And your body's just like, okay, the, the saber tooth tiger has passed basically, the dangerous pass. Now you are gonna shut body down and, and rejuvenate. So that was what it was like to go through a hurricane. I don't really wish it on anybody. But I definitely don't recommend it. Remember, if you got value out of this video, please give it a like. This makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. What kind of cool content? Well, did you check out our best September builds right here? We go through three amazing price points because it's an amazing time to build a gaming PC in September 2024. Check them out right here and we'll catch you on the next one.